On Tuesday, we were checking and a specific set of words, right? A specific set of words that we can transform. Christian and Isra came to the class that day. Can you tell us what words were we checking the other day? Mm. Try to remember, try to remember. What were we doing on Tuesday? It was about a syllable that transforms words. Yes. We saw we saw the well, we saw part of the syllable really. How uh -huh. about change the word? Okay, can you repeat that? Yes, how this syllable changes the word. How this syllable changes the word. Only Lee? No, no. Okay, connection problems. That which comes. This because this comes. You have you have connection problems. We didn't hear anything you said. So only Lee, can you repeat that? Hello, hello. Hello. You okay. Hear us. okay, can you repeat because there was no nothing we heard uh, okay. because of the connection. Yes, uh, first we saw the syllable Lee and after mm -hmm. we saw the fix sets mm -hmm. and how these fix sets can change the meaning of the word. Suffixes, not fixes. Suffixes. Sub yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Suffixes. Exactly. Which suffixes in particular did we cover? Mm. What suffixes in particular? Mm -hmm. Because we were we were transforming words, but we only covered one word family. Uh -huh. Uh, help Chris, help us, help us here. You mean according to families of the words? We only covered one, one word family. We transformed different words or, well, not different words. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we transformed words. Yes, a uh, verb. verbs and nouns. Verbs into nouns, exactly. So we checked verbs changing to nouns. Use and learn, which are verbs. Yeah, exactly. We transformed them into the corresponding noun, which is usage, using the termination H, and learning, using the ing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So we are studying the family of the uh, family of verbs. No. Verbs. We were not using verbs. You see, it's incorrect. Because aprendizaje in English is not learn. Adverbs. Adverbs. No. Mm -mm. Adverbs are li, which are yeah one of the one of the terminations that we saw is li, but but we were not focusing on adverbs. We were focusing on the termination, the final syllable. Okay, the final syllable that we saw was ing. Ing. H. And what are them for? 
suffixes? Four. What are them four? What is the purpose of these two syllables? Ah, uh, okay. To change verbs to nouns. To nouns, exactly. So we are studying nouns, surprise, surprise. Okay, we are studying how to transform a word from a different family, like an adjective or a verb, into a noun. We are studying nouns. Or the family of the nouns. Get it? Much better now? Yeah. That's what I want you to, to mentalize. We are studying, yes, the transformation of an adjective into a noun. No, sorry. Uh, the previous uh, week, we saw adjectives to adverbs. And today, we are changing other words into nouns. So you can see and you can have a, a, a clear vision on how words transform and what is it? What is the transformation of words? You know what I mean? In English, it happens. In Spanish, it happens too. But we are so, this is so common for us that we don't analyze it when we do it. This is every day. We do it in, in Spanish. This is very normal for us. And now we need to bring this ability into English, transformation of words. So this is exactly what I want you to practice today. Okay? Today we are going to do all these examples that happen when we are talking about noun formation. Okay? It says here that there are two ways to form nouns. Mm -hmm. A noun or some nouns are formed without a suffix. We don't need a suffix, right? They are not at zero change. Zero change because you don't need to change the word. Invite, take away, hope, ask. Even the word use that we checked yesterday, they can be used as, as now. So let me be more explicit with, with, uh, with colors. Where is I? I know. I closed it. Just a second. So we are in now formation. Okay. So I want to be more explicit with some colors. Okay. Let's use. In this section, you have the word invite, take away, hope, ask, and um, for example, use. And they both exist in the two families. This and like this. Invite is a verb. <clears throat> Do you agree? I invite you to the wedding. No? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, what happens, and more commonly now that we are using Zoom, many people say, Can you send me the link to the invite? Or can you send me the invite? Oh, okay. This is not a verb. Do you agree with me? Uh -huh. Have you seen, have you heard this in your office? Can you send me the invite? Yes, I always say that. You, you, you say that? Interesting. Well, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. Are, they are people using uh, the verb as a noun without really using the word 
invitation when invitation exists. Exactly. But people are using the word invite as a noun. Mm -hmm. This is pretty recent. Then another one is like take away, which is which is a verb, right? And we have this example, uh, take away. Uh, can you take your, can you take your cigarette away? Because the room is smelling bad. Can you take your cigarette away? It's taking this far from you. But take away, together with a hyphen, is food. Who remembers what's takeaway? That you can eat it in another place. Mm -hmm. Very good. So you go to the drive-thru, you order your, your sandwiches, and you take it to your house. This is takeaway food. Rapi. Rapi is takeaway food. Right? Then you get this one, hope. Hope as a verb is a is to 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 expect to expect something in your in your life. I hope that I don't have a problem in my exam. But then hope as a noun is a feeling. So I can say this example here. She told me all her hopes and dreams. Contable nouns. You see? Then you have the verb ask. As a verb, I ask you a question. I ask for a soda at the restaurant. I ask a I ask for a favor too. But as a as a noun, it's a question. Yes, look at this example. Beating the word champions is certainly a big ask for the team. Beating the world champions is certainly a big question for the team. This is probably something new for you. We have not seen, uh, this is not very common. And of course, the, that's the reason I write here that this is definitely an idiomatic expression. Okay. Okay. The last one we, I'm gonna add the word use. Because yes, the last class we transformed the word use to usage, no? But similar to hope or similar to invite and ask, you can use the word use as a noun. The use, no. Cleaning uh, clothes with a proper, how do you call this product? Let me go to language, Spanish to English, how do you say? Uh, softening, softening, or conditioner, softener, fabric softener. This is the one I need. You know, I'm talking about a, uh, what's the name? Downy? Suavitel. Downy. Suavitel, uh -huh, exactly. Uh -huh. so Suavitel, right? Cleaning clothes with a proper Fabric softener. Mm 
makes a good use for your clothes. Makes a good use. As you can see, use is not. It's not a verb in this case. Do you agree? Okay. Can you Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are the examples. So all these all these words are are uh, like you you need to identify the family because you need to know the correct use. <laughs> you need to use the correct, the correct use of the word, right? Sometimes it's it's correct to say usage, other times it's correct to say use. And the best way to analyze which one is correct is a collocation. Usage in the dictionary we saw that is used for what? Do you remember? Usage versus use. Hello. Because we use, used. In what context do we use? Do we use Books. use usage? Books. Books. You close. You close. Usage. Look at this. Usage in the dictionary. The way in which words are used in a language. Oh, in grammar? In grammar, exactly. Grammar and linguistics. Usage. But use is for the rest of the things. Clothes, tools, and what else? Anything else except words. You know what I mean? Did you understand this, Chris? Is right? Yes. Can you explain it to me? Uh, yes. Okay. We are seeing the difference between use and usage. Okay, uh -huh. okay. As a nouns, no? As two nouns. Both as a nouns. So okay. We have usage, or we use usage, and when we are talking about grammar. Language, no grammar. Okay. When we are talking about a language, of the usage of a, any, any language. Mm -hmm. In the rest of the cases, we can use use as a noun. Nice. Nice, very good. <laughs> very good. That's what collocations are about. The, the context of the word. No? The context of the word influence a lot on what word you need specifically. So these both exist, but Sometimes you can you can use one, other times you can use others. On the other side, we have the second way. Okay. The second way is like we said yesterday. Oh uh, well, last class, using affixes. Right? Mm. Sorry, sorry, you let me just interrupt for a moment. Who is Casa Senior? I don't know. We have another another person in the in the, in the chat. Hi. 
Who are you? Hi. Hello. Senior, who are you? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, no problem. I wanted, I, I just wanted to know who were you <laughs> because Jesse, Jesse didn't tell me. Okay, no problem. We can, uh, we can. Okay. Okay, no problem. Yes, we have a we have a number. No problem, guys. We don't have a hacker in the room. Okay. No hackers. Everything is cool. Okay. So the last part is the second way, right? When we transform words into nouns, it's using the syllables that we saw. Yes, really. The most common are go, sub, which are syllables that go at the beginning, and then syllables that go at the end, like shun, et, er, nes, ism, ment, and, ship, h, er. All of them are here. All of them are here. And I separated them in three different groups. When we transform adjectives to nouns, when we transform nouns into another noun, and we transform verbs into nouns. In a moment, we're gonna see them in more detail. Here you have some examples. If the very base word is yoj, do you know what is a yoj? Yoj, the person that is in the curve. Exactly, the person that is in the court. Exactly. Very good. So if you have a, 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 if you are behaving as a judge and you are judging other people, you have judgment. Or you are using your judgment. Mm -hmm. From the word consider, which is an, a, a verb, we can extract the noun consideration. No? Similar to what I have with invitation, which is another form to transform. And then finally, we have uh, another example like the liver. What's to the liver? When something arrives, mm -hmm. but to a specific person or place. Nice. You order a food, delivery food, and it comes to your house. So you have deliverance, which is the, the action, the act of delivery, or delivery. Airy. Right? The, this is now the, the whole the whole logistic of the liver. These are words that you are probably familiar with. Right? You have seen these words in other contexts, and you have seen these words in, in different in probably movies, etc. But definitely this is we sometimes don't consider that these words come from different uh, from original words. In your particular level, intermediate, uh, upper intermediate, it's super important to consider for, for, for the B2 level, it's super important to consider that some words have an original, uh, an original component, and then they are built with different pieces of information like suffixes 
okay? That ability will help you a lot when you need a word and when you need to analyze uh, audios, when you are watching a movie and you see a word that can be partitioned in different parts, that helps increase your vocabulary a lot. And that's the reason we are covering all this, okay? For you to increase your vocabulary and expand, expand it better, okay? So that's the one. Let's talk with examples, okay? So we have this word like shun, the first one that is uh, that is the most common of them. And we have words like alteration, demonstration, expansion, inclusion, and mission, right? These words come respectively from the word alter, demonstrate, expand, include, and admit, right? Alteration, demonstration, expansion, inclusion, and admission. We can have a lot more, a lot more. In this case, alter, demonstrate, expand, include, and admit, what word family do they correspond to? Mm -hmm. What word family do the base words correspond to? A verb. Very good. Alter is a verb. Demonstrate is a verb, expand is a verb, include is a verb, and admit is a verb. And then we transform these verbs into nouns. You see? The past, uh, the past time we saw this, I asked you for, for some examples, some extra examples. You told me admiration, you told me conclusion, you told me hospitalization, and there are so many. Where's any Sean or Sean? We have condition, action, protection. Promotion, solution, location, suggestion. You see, there's a there's a rule that of uh, spelling with a shun double s. Sometimes shun is spelled with double s. So let me let me help you with with these examples. Give you Sean endings. Look at this. Sean endings with double S. When words end in double S, just add I O N. For example, discuss has a double S. Confess has a double S, obsess has a double S. So you don't change the S to the T. You see what I mean? Spelling is super important, eh? In the exam, I'm going to check how you spell the word. Sometimes also, some words in in T, But it's not necessary to have a T. The T changes to double S. So when you say admission, comes from the verb admit. But that doesn't mean you need to keep the T, eliminate the T. The same thing with permit, commit, remit. Transmit and submit. 
that's new. Isn't it? Yes. Spelling rules. Question. No, no, no. Okay, be careful of your spelling. That was super, super important. Okay. All right. Give me an example, Christian, using demonstrate, and then give me another example using demonstration. Action. Yesterday I demonstrate that I can do the work. Very good. If you did it yesterday, you need to speak in past. What is the past to demonstrate? This is a regular. Yeah. Present demonstrate in past. Demonstrate. Kinda, kinda, kinda. We when when the verb ends in T. Some when the verb ends in T. Demonstrate. Kinda, kinda, kinda. Add an extra syllable. T or D. It demonstrate. 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 Exactly. Uh -huh. Only when the verb ends in T or D. Yes. So read, say it again. So I demonstrated that I can do the work. Very nice. Yesterday you demonstrated that you can do the work. That's right. Give me a give me an example with demonstration. Demonstration. Mm. The last weekend, I saw the demonstration of the new iPhones. Ah, very nice. Excellent. Very good. The demonstration of the new iPhones. That's the one. Easy. Okay. Well, I need you to have this in mind for the next ones because probably you're going to see some words that are completely new. For example, look at this. We have the base words, advertise, drive, compute, and silence. It's very probable that many of these words are new, completely. What word family do they belong to? Advertise, drive, compute, and silence. What word family do they belong to? Mm. Right. Uh, no. Wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. They are verbs too. They are verbs too. <laughs> Drive. Uh -huh. You see, this is this is the one that is more common. Right? And then a person or a thing that does this action is called with the suffix er. So the person who drives is a driver. The person who advertises is an advertiser. The person who computes, well, not the person, the thing that computes is a computer. 
and the person who silences is a silence, sir. Well, most usually for a thing. Have you seen this? It's like the, the, the part in front of a gun that makes a, a smaller uh, uh -huh. impact. Yes. That's a silence, sir, because it silences. See what I mean? Yes. The person who teaches is a teacher. Teacher. Mm -hmm. The person who who no the thing that you use for your phone to charge the battery is a charger. Yes, my lady. Thanks. You see? And there are so many, so many of them. Let me see if spelling rules. If there are some spelling rules for this. Okay, I'm gonna give you some spelling rules. Look at this. Please read these rules. Uh, Israel. Okay. Let me just move this to the right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, rule number one. Use ER with verbs ending in a single consonant. When a verb ends in a single consonant, it will almost always take the suffix er. Note that if the consonant is preceded by a single vowel, the consonant will generally double before the suffix. Though this is not always the case, go to the section doubling consonant with vowel suffix to learn more. Suffix is singular. Plural? Suffixes. Suff suffixes to learn more. Okay, so for example, ba, it's butter. Why? Because we end with a consonant. So, yeah, so we double double the, the consonant. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, I, if the word uh, ends in a consonant, mm -hmm. we repeat the last consonant and er. Yes. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> But we have butter, butter. Okay, so if we have butter, now barter, barter, barter. Yes, mm -hmm. barter. So it's barter. Precisely. Okay. In this case, barter in, ends with R, which is a consonant. Technically. Yeah. No. But we don't double it because it's an R. So that's not always the case as as a the text says. Uh, yeah. so, so this is a, a, another rule? Another rule. A spelling rule. Okay. Uh -huh. Because after after that we have canvas. Uh -huh. So in this case, yes, the word and with, but, uh, with consonant. So we repeat the last consonant and ER. Yep. <laughs> canvas sir with double S. Canvas sir. Canvas sir. And cutter is the same, the barter. Transition. Cater. Cater. Uh -huh. A cater is a person who who presents uh, drinks to you. Okay. <laughs> it's a similar bartender. Kinda. A bartender doesn't doesn't present it to you. A bartender only makes them. Ah, okay. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's the difference. <laughs> okay. But anyway, there mm -hmm. we go. So you need to open your eyes a lot when you are reading and when you are exploring new words, because the spelling counts a lot. 
and I tell you as a personal issue, spelling is my biggest challenge. I always omit words. I always omit letters. I always omit. This is my personal uh, nemesis, the spelling. So be careful with your spelling, okay? <laughs> because I, I know personally the problem with this. <laughs> Thank you, promise. <laughs> Anyway, let's give a pause for a minute uh, because uh, Jesse is going to take attendance. Hello, Jess. Good morning. Hi, good morning to everyone. So we're going to say attendance, please. Yes. Christian Rios. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Thank you. Connie Laura. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Connie. Thank you. It's a Bejarano. Absent. All right. Jesus Cruz. Absent. Also. All right. Luis Alejandro Castillo. Absent. Mm -hmm. All right. And Israel Torrecilla. Hi. I'm here. Hi, Israel. Thank you. Good morning. So that's all? That's all. All right. Thank you. Good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. So let me find uh, the next one. It's very interesting that this er is considered for the person who does an action, right? But here we can also add the suffix or because when the word ends in P, when the word ends in T. The syllable that you add is not, is not a R, it's OR. Okay, so that's rule 1.5. Come on with this one, Connie. Oh, sorry, I didn't listen my name. Uh, okay. rule, uh, use or with multiple multi-syllable verbs ending in it, while single syllable verbs that end in it we will usually take the suffix er and have the final t double doubled doubled as in hither, neither, quither, cider, bears we to a more syllable. Sitter. It comes Sitter? from the, yeah, what was the original word in this case? Sit. Sit, uh -huh, like sit down. So okay. cider. Cider, etc. Bears we to a more syllables ending in it are much more likely to take the suffix or, for example, audit, auditor, credit, creditor, edit, editor, exhibit, exhibitor. Mm -hmm. So then it's not air, it's or, mm -hmm. yes. right? But as hashtag English, there is always exceptions. So be careful, you see? An editor, it is not edit there, no? Because it ends in T. But there are other exceptions such as the limit, profit, and recruit, which don't take the or. You are not a recruiter, no? You're a recruiter with an E. So, yep, sometimes it's a little bit tricky, but you need to open your eyes watching the dictionary, verifying with the dictionary. You need to be completely, completely, almost married to your dictionary. Okay. Any question here? Mm. Good. The, the or happens also with words that end in eight. 
multisyllable verbs ending in it or a. An example of this, we have accelerate. Okay, transform accelerate into a noun. Accelerator. Exactly. Very good. Accelerator. Administrate into a noun. Administrator. Administrator. That's right. We'll make it smaller because we cannot see what's up. Okay. We have coordinate as a noun. Coordinator. Coordinator. So all these verbs that ends in eight doesn't transform, don't transform, sorry, with air. They transform with or, and they are very similar cases. Mm -hmm. And we have also words that end in CT. You know? Words ending in CT. Such as contract, conduct, abduct. Direct and again. Transform contact into a noun. Contractor. Very good. Act into a noun. Actor. Yeah. Conduct into a noun. Conductor. Conductor. Abduct. Into a noun? Abductor. Abductor. Direct? Director. Okay. Executor. Oh, execute is a different verb. Okay. Ejector. Ejector. What is it there? To inject is to, do you remember CDs? There was a, there was a button to eject the, the CD. Oh. So the, the little ones uh, went out and you could take out the CD. Just to eject. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Those were, those were the good times. Yes. That's it. Right? Words in eight, words in sixteen. And we have a dog spell. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Those are the most relevant tools. So, as you can see, it's it's kind of tricky. You know, spelling is very important, and you need to practice your observation. Practicing observation it makes everything very easy. Let's pass to the next one. Mate. Okay. Men. Come also from verbs to nouns, okay? Verbs to nouns, develop, punish, employ, and unemploy, they are what family? Verbs. They are verbs, that's right. So when you transform them into nouns, you get development, punishment, employment, and unemployment. Okay. There is really no uh, 
spelling rules for this in particular, because words don't don't a uh, don't change a lot, to be honest. Okay, there's no double syllable, there's no double consonant, there's no double a uh, vowel, there's no problem. We just can think about examples. For example, achieve becomes achievement. Disappoint becomes disappointment. And excite becomes excitement. Please transform argue into a noun. Argument. Please transform hey into a noun. Yes. Payment. Please transform um, Norwich. What is Norwich? So to the I'll be Christian with the definition of Norwich. I wish to give a person anonymous or a plant alive and healthy with food, etc. Mm -hmm. Nourish. You see? Mm -hmm. You are nourishing your kids when you are giving them food. Very similar to nutrition. Do you know nutrition? But mm -hmm. in a in a way that that helps them, because one thing is to to give them nutrition, and the one thing is uh, actually it can be uh, uh, verb. The 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 noun is nutrition, and the verb is nourish. You nourish your kids, right? If you give them a good diet. So the concept of, of nourishing other people is using the concept of nourishing your people. Hello, good morning. Is anybody there? Yes. Yes. The concept of nourishing your people is? Nourishment? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> exactly. Look at the nourishment you know. Picture, 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 picture. Mm -hmm. Nourishment menu. Healthy eating, relaxation, home, care and finances, career and finances, social, love and creativity. Wow. That, that's a good poster. But anyway, nourish. Nourishment. In each, where have you seen this word? Engagement. Excellent. Engagement. Very good. What what is engage? Do you know? Just to to feel attracted to to attract the people to attract something. Very nice. Uh huh. And Very nice. It. But also also you know what like to give like to enter into concentration like yeah. to start aha like when you when you're super super focused on something you are engaged yes that's right uh -huh. so it's not necessarily for for entertainment it can be also for for your job for example or things like that so engagement is the concept of being like focused. Right. Also, we have engage as 
as comices as attract and catch in a way that you that you cannot escape. You know? Okay. For example, when you fish, when you are fishing, you engage the, the fish. Or in a metaphorical way, when you get the engagement ring with your girlfriend and boyfriend. You were thinking about that, Connie, right? Yes. <laughs> Not letting what the person. <laughs> Yeah, come on, man. You engage <laughs> you are... a woman. <laughs> exactly, you engage the woman. She cannot go, you know? And a man, too. <laughs> you engage a man. in this guy, he does cannot escape. <laughs> that Very is not well. cool for, for men. <laughs> <laughs> the standard, the standard one, only. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the way. Okay. That's it. Okay. We have this one. We have and and int. And and int, which are words very similar to the other the to er is a person who does something. Okay. The person who does something, and we are talking about no changes, as you can see. There is no, no, uh, what's the name of this? No spelling changes. Rules. Assist, consult, and study are. Nouns? Nouns, incorrect. There are verbs too. Exactly. They are. They are verbs too. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Assist is to help. Consult is to check and study. Well, you get it. Mm -hmm. All of them can transform into nouns using the, the suffix and. When do we use and and when do we use and? That's a very good question. And is used in how can I tell you that? And okay, here we go. Use and when we are talking about here, words that end in a soft C or a soft G. A soft T or a soft G. For example, we have a song. Hmm. No, but these are adjectives. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So what am I doing? The first. Oh, okay. No. If the verb is end, in n or air or er, example, defer. What is to defer? Do you know the word different? Right? Yes. When you have a different opinion, you defer. Mm, okay. It's similar to say, I disagree. Okay. So a person who defers is a... Defer. 
Did that hurt? Uh -huh. Look at the what um, topics are we studying? Different. Exactly. Different. <laughs> and we can use double R. Different. The same thing with the word. Differ. That's different. But that's an adjective, so that doesn't count. Sorry. No. That's an adjective. Refer. Refer, sorry. Right? When you refer, you get referent. Reference. Mm -hmm. Dear, adherent, adherent, exactly. Like the pants, like the what? Like the, the pan is pan, pan. Ah, yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's on adherent. Oh, okay, uh -huh. precisely. Adherent. And in here, I, I think I think you can use it as an adjective too, eh? But in this case, I, I am using it as an adjective. But as a noun, you can see, you can say that the adherent uh, a sticker, a sticker is adherent, is an adherent, as a noun. Okay. That's enough. The review, appearance, that's it. <laughs> this syllable is tricky, you guys, because this syllable exists in the adjective suffixes too. You are going to see a lot, for example, the word different. Different is an adjective. So it, it will create a little bit of a confusion. You know, be careful when you are using this, this uh, or when you see a word that ends in end, because it's probably a description. It can be a noun, it can be a description. It depends on your analysis. Okay, which one are you using? Okay. We have the word, some words. Some nouns don't have a base word. Nouns ending. And don't have a base word. For example, accident. Something. Incident. Freedom. Friday. Right? These three specific words, they don't have another base word, but they end in end. So whenever you don't know what type of word this is, you can check the, the final syllable. The final symbol will help you. Who would know that Trident is a is not a, a chewing gum brand, no? It's actually a word in English. Do you know what is a trident? Nope. No? You do you know uh, uh, what's the name of Poseidon? The um, Poseidon is a the king of the ocean. Oh, yes, the thing that he holds. He holds a trident. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you see, Aquaman has a trident. Then I don't, I don't see the correlation between the thing and them. And the chewing gum. <laughs> yes, <laughs> me neither. We need it. Hmm? That's a good question. 
Well, I don't know why the name. But those are examples. Sequence. That's it. Remember that, just a little note. The suffix and is present in adjectives to make sure you are using another word, convenient, uh, current, brilliant, abundant, right? But these, these are not nouns. These are adjectives. A more detailed class, no? More, more specific. More specific things. And an end. Because you need, I need to nurture your vocabulary. Do you remember nurture? Yeah. All right? So you need to nurture your vocabulary. A lot, a lot, a lot. This is part one. Tomorrow we continue with part two and with the video. By the way, I didn't send you the vocabulary for the video. Here it is, okay? I think some of you have it. Uh, this is new for Chris in this case. Okay, please screenshot the vocabulary because that's part of the video that we're gonna check. Okay. And that's pretty much it guys, excellent class. Very, very good. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Very, very good. I'll see thank you later. You. Switch to Spanish. We're going to go and get this. How are you going to do it? We are better in the stream.